What's going on everyone? My name is Kyle Millis and I'm a swimmer here at the University of California, Berkeley. In this video, I'm gonna be going over a more serious topic that's currently been going on in the sporting world of swimming, Leah Thomas. I know that I'm not as qualified to speak on these topics given that I am a man. I'm not as affected by these things that are going on with women's sports at the moment. And most importantly, I'm, I'm not transgender and I don't understand at all. So I hope that I can keep all of my opinions out of this video and please everyone in the comments be really respectful as well. And I hope that I can give an overview of what's going on with the Leah Thomas situation. If you guys like these types of videos, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel and let's get right into it. So in order to best understand the story, I thought that I should give you guys a full overview of who Leah Thomas really is. In 2017, Will Thomas came to the University of Pennsylvania and was part of the men's swim team. After three years of competing on the men's swim team, Will decided to transition into Leah Thomas. In order to meet NCAA requirements, Leah Thomas had to take a gap year and make sure that she had the proper testosterone levels in her body before competing with the University of Pennsylvania's women's swim team. And she did. And in the fall of 2021, Leah started competing on the University of Pennsylvania women's swimming team. Now, while many will say that Leah was cheating or breaking the rules because she was a part of the men's swim team and then she jumped over to the women's swim team, Leah actually met all of the guidelines set out by the NCAA which leads people not to really question Leah because she wasn't breaking any rules, but rather the NCAA. Many people throughout this issue have cited that it isn't Leah Thomas's fault that she has gotten so much media attention, but rather the NCAA for not being as proactive, taking a stance or creating an alternative for fair competition of what all athletes deem to be fair. However, many will argue that Leah did have an advantage of her build, the fact that she was six foot three as a female, her lung capacity and her strength. As we move throughout the 2021 season, Plenty of people started to realize that Leah was making national headlines. I mean, she's a really fast swimmer. And that's where I think some of the discrepancy starts to come in. People say, well, Will Thomas wasn't a fast swimmer. That's not true. Will Thomas broke 15 minutes in the mile. I mean, that is really hard to do if for people that don't understand. For, uh, for reference, in the 500 freestyle, Will Thomas was a 418 definitely deserve to be on the University of Pennsylvania men's swim team, not an average swimmer by any stretch of the means. Throughout the year, Leah began to break some records, such as at the Zippy Invitational where she smashed all the records and caught national media attention, such as the likes of Tucker Carlson, as well as the Ivy League Championships where in the 500 freestyle, she absolutely smashed everyone, beating everyone by a pool length. Thus, leading into the 2022 NCAA Championships, you can understand how there's lots of national media presence around Leah Thomas. And I have to feel for this girl. All opinions aside, I'm 22 years old, roughly the same age as Leah, and I would not want to be in the national media spotlight that she is in for anything that I was doing. Despite all of this, there was plenty of people that didn't want to see Leah swim at the 2022 NCAA Championships. So over 5,000 athletes signed a petition, including over 300 Olympic athletes and coaches, including Jessica Hardy, Eddie Reese, and David Marsh. Well, we all know what ended up going and happening. Leah went and competed at the 22 NCAA championships and had an amazing meet. She killed it. And then everything else followed. Plenty of people are now saying that this is a violation of Title IX and that it now has to be redone. Or they're calling for a new level of competition for transgender athletes. At the end of the day, I think that everyone just wants to see fair competition. And as long as the NCAA makes the proper regulations that comply with science, I think all athletes should be fine with that. Who knows what will happen in the fight for transgender athletes to play in sports, but let's get into the records. Let's dive into the numbers behind what happened to Leah Thomas at the NCAA championships. I would say that this is the most heavily covered and a women's NCAA swimming championship has ever been. I mean, think about it. Swimming's not a very predominant sport outside of the Olympics. Why, why were there Fox News, CNN News lining up outside this aquatic center? It was all for Leah Thomas. So plenty of people will talk about the fact that she broke plenty of records throughout the year, whether it was an Ivy League record or at the Zippy League invite where she lapped plenty of swimmers. And that is when she really caught mass media attention around the winter of 2021. But you will note that overall, Leah Thomas is only the 16th fastest performer all time in the women's 500 freestyle. Even when you go and look at the 2021 Women's Swimming Championships, Paige Madden won the event in a time that would have beat Leah. So it's like, was Leah really going and breaking all of these records? Or was she just a really incredible swimmer in her own rights? What plenty of people will point out went wrong at the 2022 NCAA Women's Swimming and Diving Championships was the 200 freestyle incident. The next day at night in the 200 freestyle final, 
Leah Thomas, and Riley Gaines, a swimmer from the University of Kentucky, both tied for fifth place. Upon finishing and going into the ready room where they were going to go up on the podium and receive the rewards after, Riley Gaines was informed that she was not going to be getting a fifth place trophy because that would be going to Leah and that she was instead going to be getting a sixth place trophy and that she was going, going to be getting a fifth place trophy shipped back home to her in Kentucky. Riley told the Daily Wire, quote, in the ready room, an NCAA representative came up to Gaines and said, hey, I just want to let you know, we only have one fifth place trophies, so yours will be coming in the mail. We went ahead and gave the other fifth place trophy to Leah, but you can pose on the podium with the sixth place trophy. This really rubbed Gaines the wrong way as she said that she had been working the whole season for this moment and just to have her trophy not be given to her really broke her heart and she went home that day trophyless as she had to give the sixth place trophy back. This prompted Gaines and plenty of media news coverage as she went on the Daily Wire and Fox News and plenty of other media outlets telling her story about what happened at the NCAA Swimming and Diving Championships thus creating more controversy around Leah Thomas. However, I don't think Riley had any malicious intent. I think she was just being bombarded with plenty of questions by news outlets all around the country, and she just really wanted to answer them. I am in full support of her and her full support of her transition and her swimming career and everything that she does like that because there's no doubt that she works hard. Gaines then went on to say later to the news outlets that she was actually in full support of Leah Thomas and her swimming. However, what she's not in support of is the current rules that the NCA have in place. And that is the problem that plenty of people have and the main problem that I think plenty of people keep coming back to. Another famous photo that happened at the NCAA championships was the podium during the 500 freestyle when Leah won. The girls that got second through fourth ended up posing and taking their own photo and then some people quoted them as saying, oh, these girls were making their own podium without Leah. However, they really weren't in reality and all those girls came out and said, no, we're friends, we all made the Olympic team together this summer and we really just wanted to take a photo together. However, there's plenty of discrepancies and what the media will show you is that Leah Thomas was not posing with them. Poorly timed photo or whatever it might be, that is what the 2022 Women's NCAA Swimming and Diving Championships will be characterized by from the news media outlets, that photo and that photo alone. And that's a bummer because there's plenty of great swimming that happened there. As, as a swimmer, I know that those girls work their butts off all year. Throughout all of this, something that I've thought about the whole time is the national media attention that Leah Thomas has faced. It's not regular for a college athlete, especially a swimmer, to face all this national media attention, good or bad. I mean, outside of one interview with Elizabeth Beisel, we've rarely seen Leah Thomas in the media light, and I probably bet that she wants to keep it that way. So in light of Leah staying out of the public eye, I ask that all of you guys be really respectful in the comments down below. And I bet that at the end of the day, all Leah really wants to do is just pursue her love of swimming and just continue to be a better athlete while continuing this next phase in her life. I hope that in the future that the NCAA goes and makes maybe some stricter rules or has another level of competition or really just clears the gray area that was this year in college swimming for women. Now I know there's gonna be plenty of people out there that don't like this video and that's fine. I'm a male and I'm giving my opinion on a transgender female swimming. I, as a swimming athlete in the NCAA, just wanted to give an overview, not my opinion on the subject of Leah Thomas, because I think it's important that everyone understands what really went on and the facts of the situation. I hope that you guys all now have a better understanding and that we can make sure that Leah feels treated with respect in the swimming community. There's plenty of research that went into doing this video, so if you guys are at all curious about the links that I use, make sure to check them out down below. And with that said, that is gonna do it for this video. As always, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And until next time.